Okay, so if you guys check out the videos in the playlist that we have for types of life insurance policies. So I got my little office dog here. She hangs out for some study sessions. So if you guys check out the playlist of the videos, types of life insurance policies, I break all these down individually. But what I'm going to be doing here is going over them as a summary for all the different types of life insurance policies that you'll need to know about when studying for your life insurance licensing course. What I'm going to do here is summarize all of the different insurance policies that you'll probably need to know about for life insurance licensing, for your life insurance pre-license course. So let me get right into it here. The first one we have is term life insurance. This is like the most basic type of life insurance. It's temporary protection, and it provides coverage for a specific time period and a specific amount of coverage. So the way, an example, someone can get a 20-year, $1 million level term policy. So what that means is that someone will have, someone will have a fixed premium for 20 years. So every month or every year, depending on if they want to pay it monthly or annually, they will pay X amount of dollars. Okay? After the end of that 20 years, the policy can renew, but most people just drop them because when they renew it, it costs a lot more money. So it's for a specific time period. It's typically used to cover like uh, financial obligations, debts, or income replacement, or key person insurance if it's in a business. So what I mean by that is, uh, number one, say someone has a, a, a income replacement to their family. Okay, so say... Husband's the breadwinner. He makes $100,000 a year. He wants to have his income replaced for 10 years. If he dies, 100000 times 10 is a million. He'd probably want a little more than that to account for inflation. Inflation. So say he gets a $1.2 million 10-year term policy, meaning if he dies at any time in that 10 years, his family gets $1.2 million. At the end of the 10 years, he may have some options where he can convert it to a whole life policy or just renew the term. But the basics of it is that if, if it was a whole life for $1.2 million, it would cost a lot more money. So term insurance, it gets you the greatest amount of coverage for the lowest premium compared to other products. <clears throat> so the point of a term policy is I want as much life insurance as possible in this time period. I'm not really worried about the other things, the cash accumulation or anything like that. I'm not worried about the tax advantages. I'm worried about... If I die, that someone or some entity has enough money to replace me, my, my human life value. So what's my life worth monetary, as a, in a monetary way? Okay. Um, typically used, like I said, to cover things like debt, income replacement, or key person insurance. I'm going to have this do these documents as links in the uh, description as well. <clears throat> so a key person insurance plan would be a term policy. Say I am in a business and... Um, I'm going to be around for at least the next 10 years in the business. The other, if I'm an owner in the business, the other business owner or owners may want to get a term insurance policy on me so that if I die, they can pay to train a replacement or buy out my portion of the business. Okay, so that's really what key person insurance is for. And then a debt would be something to cover a mortgage. So there's usually a maximum age at which term is no longer offered. So some companies, it's age 60, some companies 65, some companies age 70, where term is not going to be offered to anybody. Uh, here at my agency, Senior Life Services, or at our agency, the oldest that we go for term is 65. So we, we can't write a term on anybody over 65 years old. They just don't want to take that much risk because the companies are taking way much more of a risk that the person's going to die in that time period than if they say, if the payments are spread out over a much longer period, like their whole life, and uh, the premium is higher. And when there's someone's older, the difference between, think about it, if someone gets a 20-year term and they're 65, that's not much, they're not going to be around much longer than it would be for, for a whole life. You see, they're not going to be paying their premiums for that much longer, if longer at all. So that's why term doesn't really last. It is a maximum age. Um, this is a maximum age for any policy, but for term, it's usually younger than whole life. So it's pure death protection, pure life insurance. There's no cash value, and the insured must die during the term for the benefit to pay out. So if it's a 20-year term policy, the insured has to die within that 20 years. 
The premium is always the same throughout the life of the policy, regardless of which type it is. So there's a couple different term policies I'm going to be getting into in a second here, but the premium is always going to be the same. And the premium is based on the attained age or the age that the insured is at the time that they get the policy. Okay, so it's a attained age is is how old the insurance company deems them to be at that time. Some companies actually do nearest age. So nearest age means what age are you closest to? For instance, if you are closer to your, say someone is, uh, we'll take a newborn. If a newborn is eight months old, they're technically closer to their one year birthday than they are to their uh, zero birthday or no birthday to their birth, right? So they're, they're, they would be one year old in the insurance company's eyes if they're using the age nearest uh, formula for that, okay? Uh, now there's types, there's level, there's increasing, we don't really need this for our exam, and then there's decreasing term. They'll probably ask about, they may ask about level or decreasing. So level we kind of covered. So level term is the most common type. So level means that the death benefit is level, and it doesn't change throughout the life of the policy. The level does not have to do with the premium, okay? Level has to do with the death benefit. The premium is always the same in the term policy. It's never going to change. Level has to do with level has to do with the uh, the 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 death benefit itself okay premiums are sort of averaged out over the life of the term so if a term expires and the insured renews it at the time the premium is based on the attained age when it's renewed so say we go right here I'll give you a, a graph here so we have our death benefit on the y axis in the age on the x-axis, the flat here, and on the up and down, we got the death benefit. So the higher this is, the higher the death benefit, and then the longer this goes, the older the policy, the older the client is. So here, say we have the death benefit, whatever this may be, call it 100000 I don't know, and it's level. The death benefit is level throughout the life of the policy, and the premium is too. At the end of the term policy, the insured could renew it. Sometimes they can convert it to a whole life policy through a convertibility option that allows them to convert it to a whole life without having to prove evidence of insurability or to show that they're insurable. They don't have to go through underwriting again. So that's a cool option on term policy. Now next we have annual renewable term. This is the purest form of term, term insurance. I'm gonna zoom out for a little bit here so you can see it all. The annual renewable term, oh, you still can't, but annual renewable term is the purest form of term insurance. So it's, it's term for one year. And at the end of the year, you may have the ability to renew it without proving you're insurable but the premium increases based on your age. So this is actually going to be the cheapest insurance every year if you get a term policy. If you get a 20-year term policy, the premium is averaged out. So at first, you're going to be overpaying, and then later on, you're going to be underpaying, right? Because it, it says as you get older, the cost of insurance increases, but in a 20-year in a in a term policy, the premium is going to be the same. So in the beginning of a 20-year term policy, you're going to be paying more than you would be paying if you got an annually renewable term where it just increases a little bit every every year. You renew the policy, so the premium goes up based on your age. In a in a, a level, in a 20-year term policy, it's averaged out. So in the beginning, like I said, you may be like you're overpaying, right? You'll pay more in the beginning of a 20-year term than you would if you got an annual renewable term at the same age with the same rating. But later on in the policy's lifetime, you're going to pay less than you would it pay for an annual renewable term at that time. So this is really good if uh, an annual renewable term is really good if someone isn't going to need life insurance for a long time. Okay, Say someone, example, someone gets a divorce and they have to pay alimony for like three years or child support for like three years or whatever. They may get an annually renewable term. They're going to renew it every year. They're only going to need it for three years. That way, if they die, the uh, surviving ex-spouse, I guess, would still be able to get their child support or alimony. That's just a, uh, an example of what annual renewable term could be for. Next, we have decreasing term. So decreasing term. Oh, and I'll show you. You can see in the graph here that the, uh, the premium that's every year at the age here. Every, so this is a year. Boom, boom. And then every year, the premium increases a little bit, but the death benefit remains level, okay? Decreasing term. The premium remains the same, but the death benefit decreases over time. It's used to cover debts like a mortgage because you pay it off over time. So the amount of money needed to pay it off shrinks, right? As you pay a mortgage, the amount that you owe on it decreases, and you won't have to pay as much over time. 
It's usually convertible, but not renewable, since it shrinks to zero at the end of the term. So what that means is at the end of the term, you can convert any part of it to a whole life policy, but you can't renew it because there's no more death benefit in the term to actually renew. So there's some rules on that, whatever, with each insurance company. You just want to know that it's usually convertible, but not renewable. And it shrinks to zero death benefit at the end of the term. And what you can see here is the death benefit starts off high. It drops over time. The premium is level. This is covered to something, used to cover something like a, a mortgage. Now we have return of premium term. So it's an increased premium cost. It may give premiums back at the end of the term if the insured outlives the policy. So the way that a return of premium term works is that if the, the insured outlives the policy, then they get their money back or a chunk of their money back or whatever. Or the premiums are added to the death benefit when they die. Okay, So sometimes in a, in a uh, return of premium term, the insurance carrier will actually add the premiums to the death benefit when the uh, client dies. So there's really two forms of it there. Either they give the money back to plus the death benefit, or if the person outlives the term, they give back their premiums or a portion of them. It significantly has higher premiums. Personally, I don't sell these. They're not worth it to me because uh, just based on the math, but to some people it makes sense. If some people are like, I'm never gonna send, spend, I'm never gonna invest the difference in the money. Getting the money back sounds good. It's a way of forced savings because I'm not that great at saving on my own. This is a good way to do it. So special features of term policy. So sometimes some of them can be renewable. So in a renewable, a renewable feature of a term policy is that policy owner can renew the insurance at the end of the term without providing evidence of insurability. So they don't have to go through underwriting again. Now, if they renew the policy, the new premium is increased based on the attained age. And this I just put is, is for myself to explain, but I'm going to erase that. New premium is based on the attained age. So what this means is you, they can renew the term at the end of the, the whatever, if it's an annual renewable or a five-year, 10-year, 20-year term, whatever it may be. At the end of that term, they can renew it, but their premium will increase based on their age at that time. Most people do not renew term policies unless it's an annually renewable term. The company essentially raises the rate so much that they say, we don't really want your business on this. We want you to go through underwriting again, or we want you to convert it to a whole life because the risk for the insurance company drops a lot more when they go to a whole life because the client's going to be paying a lot more money for each dollar in death benefit, and they're going to have it through the course of their lifetime. So you may ask, are they going to be paying on it for the rest of their life or a big portion of their life? So you may ask, why would anybody get a whole life policy then? Well, it's guaranteed you're going to die someday, so it's guaranteed there's going to be a death benefit. So it's a guaranteed legacy builder for someone's family, and there's also cash value, and you'll learn about that in the course, but yeah. So convertible. Now, a convertible means the provision that allows the policy owner to convert the policy to a permanent whole life policy without evidence of insurability. So say I have a $100,000 term policy that I'm paying 100 bucks a month for, and it's a 10-year term. At the end of the 10 years, I may be able to convert all or a portion of that $100,000 death benefit to a whole life. You know, my premium may go up 10 or 15 times what I'm paying at that time, uh, or, or you know, 5 to 15 times, whatever. But it does give me the ability to have a permanent insurance plan. And where this may come in handy, I'll just give you guys an example here. Say you have a half a million dollar 10 year term policy and you're um, you know, 50 years old. And when you turn 60, when, you, when, you're, when you're 50, you didn't really have that much money saved up, but you turn 60, you got a pretty nice nest egg for yourself. You got maybe some real estate income coming in and you, you, $500,000 isn't really as big of a deal to you as it was when you were 50. And now you want to make sure that there's some legacy there for your family, maybe to pay off any taxes or estate planning and stuff like that. So you could take that $500,000 term, convert 50000 of it to a permanent policy. That way you get a $50,000 death benefit going right to your family for them to take care of the estate attorneys and uh, inheritance lawyers and whatever else that may be needed for that to kind of pick up the pieces after you pass away because they're going to have to, your money's going to sit in probate. But a life insurance benefit, like any inheritance money, will sit in probate court for a while. So some people like to convert money in their term to a whole life uh, after the term is about to um, exp not expire, but the, the time of the term is about to run up so that they can have some money for that purpose. That's just an example, right? So they're saying, hey, while my family's waiting for all my retirement money or all my money I had saved up, while they're waiting for that to come through, um, they can have some of this money to help with any court costs and stuff like that. 
So the premiums are based on the insurance, the insurance attained age when converted. So if they got the policy when he was 50, and then he, tur- and then he, he converts it when he's 60, the premiums are based on what the policy would cost when he's 60, not when he's 50, when he originally got it. Premiums are significantly higher for the same death benefit for a whole life because it's guaranteed to pay it at some point, right? It's guaranteed the insurance company is going to pay a claim at some point. Term, they're taking a big risk, but if they do underwriting right, there's like a 99.9% chance that I think like 90, over 99% of people outlive their term policies or something outrageous like that. Like those companies are pretty good at predicting if someone's going to die. And then now it'll also have cash value and maybe some other features on the whole life. So if you'd like to reach out to me, you can always reach me at jve at the jve.com. Um, I actually do run a life insurance agency, a life insurance sales agency. We sell uh, life insurance 100% over the phone, no driving around, none of that stuff. We provide leads to all of our agents and the whole nine. So that's just a little pitch from me. But if you ever wanted to figure out what we do, then you can. And also you can check out my other channel, Justin Vom Eigen. Just search my name. And uh, once you start selling insurance and you'll see I have tips on how to sell insurance over the phone. I have the best YouTube channel for selling life insurance on the phone. So you can just search my name in YouTube, Justin Von Meigen, and that other channel will come up. Okay, and now we're going to talk about whole life permanent insurance. So permanent insurance, aka whole life insurance. So it remains in effect for the entire life or until age 100, at which point it endows. So endows means it's done. You are good. That's it. And what they do is the, the cash value, what that means is the cash value in the policy has equaled the death benefit, at which point the insurance company will write a check out for the death benefit to the insured. So if you get a $100,000 term pol- I mean a whole life policy, and you live until age 100, then the insurance company will write you a check for the $100,000. If you die before that time, then they write a $100,000 check to your beneficiary. It also builds cash value, which is the policy savings element. So little brief history on cash value. Cash value, as you pay into your insurance policy, there's a separate little uh, account, you could call it, in the policy that builds up in value. It's called cash value. I think I don't think technically or legally you can call it a savings account. It's a savings element. So that builds up in value over time. Now, what happened, the reason why cash value came into effect is because back in the day, it was always just whole life insurance, like hundreds of years ago when this started, or, or 100 years ago, or, or life insurance started hundreds of years ago. But what happened was people had their life insurance policies, and they were just paying in. And then at some point, at one point, a lot of people were like, I'm sick of just paying into this. I'm not getting anything back. And uh, I don't have as much chance of me dying anymore, so I'm going to stop paying. So life insurance companies started saying, hey, if you pay for X amount of years, we're going to give you some of your premium back that you, we haven't used yet. So hey, after four years, we're going to give you premium back. And then it started other companies to compete would be like, okay, well, then after two years, we're going to give you your premium back, some of your premiums, not all, but some of your premiums back that you paid in. And then what happened is they just kind of all settled on having cash value, which is saying, you know what? Kind of almost from the beginning, if not in the first year or two, we're going to have an option where there's going to be an element in this policy that builds in value that you can access as cash. So it's like a, it's like having a savings account built into your life insurance policy. Now, whole life, uh, it, it has some tax advantages too. Whole life offers lifetime protection. There's some key characteristics. So it's a level premium. So the premium will never change. It's based on the issue age. It never changes. So the, the premium, the monthly premium on a whole life policy will never increase and never decrease. Sometimes you can pay the policy off. So they can have them where it's a 10 pay or limited pay, a 5 pay, meaning after 5 years, they pay a little extra for 5 years or 10 years or 20 years. At the end of that time, the, pol- the client doesn't have to make a premium payment anymore and it's paid up. So they have a policy, it's paid up. They don't have to worry about making any more premiums. There's a death benefit. It's guaranteed. It remains level, uh, the, meaning it's the same cash value created by accumulation of premiums. Essentially, it's unused pieces of your premium. It's scheduled to reach the face amount of the policy when the insured reaches age 100. It's paid out to the policy owner at this time. And there's a guaranteed interest rate credited on a regular basis. So there's a guaranteed amount of interest that your cash value can earn so it's not just being you know, rotting to inflation. So there are some things on a whole life policy as well called living benefits. So living benefit, a policy owner can borrow against the money in the cash value in the form of a loan that is to be paid back with interest. Now, since it's a loan, it isn't declared as income. So 
what happens is that the policy owner can borrow against the cash value and they can use it for whatever they want and then pay it back on their own time at an interest rate. They can also surrender the policy for the entire cash value amount. It usually does not start growing until the third policy year, but that's not always the case. There are some larger life insurance companies that are called mutual companies that offer like significantly better cash value elements. And some of these start cash value from immediate, uh, depending on how you pay the policy. But that's a different, a little more advanced stuff. This is just basics on, on whole life. So gross tax deferred. Tax deferred means you don't pay tax on it now. So if, um, say you have an, a lot of investments, you have to pay tax every year based on the appreciation. Uh, for whole life, you don't have to pay a tax on it every year. Think of your, your, your account, right? Your bank account. You get like a small tax on it every year. And there's like a there's like a what it earns, uh, interest, and then there's a tax, and then you, on the interest it's very very minimal. But yeah, so it usually goes tax deferred. Now there's three basic forms: <clears throat> ordinary whole life and straight whole life or straight life, which is basic whole life. So I'm going to show you this graph here that you're going to see. Let me just change the aspect ratio of this. Okay, so what we have is the issue age. Uh, da -da. Okay, we have the death benefit here. The age, issue age, and age 100. So obviously this is the money axis death benefit. So the death benefit's blue. It's level throughout the whole policy. Cash value increases steadily over time. And if you look at age 100, the cash value each equals the death benefit, and it, uh, it pays out. It's not always linear like this, but this is just a representation to give you an idea of what it looks like. And then the premium is level over time. So you're paying X amount of money every month, and then that's the premium, okay? So, or month, year, whatever it may be. Now, limited pay. So I'm going to show you kind of what I was talking about before with a limited pay whole life. Okay? So with limited pay, what we have is the death benefit up here. The death benefit remains level. The cash value increases over time at an interest rate. But the limited pay premium, you're going to pay a little more. It actually makes sense if the limited pay premium was like up here. You're going to pay a little bit more up front, but you only pay it for a certain amount of time, and then you don't have to pay any more premiums, and you still have the policy, the cash value increases the whole whole nine. Okay. Now, a limited pay is designed to have premiums paid up in a specific amount of time. The policy owner chooses the time period when they take out the policy. So five year, five pay, 10 pay, 15 pay, 20 pay, etc. paid up by 65. So LP 65, life paid up by 65. This means that if it's so people can plan retirement. So they may say, well, I want a whole life policy, but I don't want to make any more payments by the time I turn 65. And they can have that. So your premiums will be structured based on that. Now, if you do a limited pay policy, your premiums initially are higher, right? Because you're making more money in a shorter amount of time. But overall, you end up spending less money on the policy because they, they give you like a credit for spending more up front. Because a life insurance company just takes your premiums. They invest it in an account to earn interest, and they, they want to have that money up front, so they kind of cut you a deal there. Now, single premium pay. What this is, single premium, you make one payment, boom, and then your cash value increases like this over time, and you have the death benefit level. So it's one payment, and you have instant cash value, and then it increases. So it's designed to be paid up after one lump sum payment generates immediate cash value. <clears throat> Next, we go into whole life insurance. Now, great, great. Remember, regular whole life, basic whole life, it has a minimum interest rate. So, let me zoom in here because I know you guys are on Eagle Vision. So, a variable whole life, it has a level premium. So, fixed premium never changes. Uh, it's investment based. So, a variable whole life is, is meaning that the monthly payment will never change on a variable whole life. It's investment based. So, in a whole life policy, Right, a regular whole life, as you can see here, see how we have the, it's a guaranteed minimum interest rate. We have an interest rate accumulate over time, and it's a level gain on the interest of the, of the, the cash value. It grows at a steady rate. For a variable whole life, it is really based on mutual funds and other investments, which are riskier. So some years it could go up a lot, some years it could drop, depending on how the market performs. Now, the cash value in a basic whole life policy, that is invested in the insurance company's general account, and that is 100% on the insurance company if they mess up at all. So it, it's the insurance company's liability. When you have a variable whole life, 
the cash value is not in the insurance company's own investment. So the policy owner assumes all the risk. So there's a minimum death benefit that's guaranteed. Cash value is not guaranteed, though, and it fluctuates based on the performance of the portfolio that it's invested in. So the market can go up, 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 and then <laughs> crashes, and then you lose it. So it, it's really more designed for younger people that have that time frame to handle that risk. If someone's like older and they're you know, 50s, 60s, it, it doesn't make sense for them to get a variable whole life a lot of the time unless they can afford to take that risk with their money, which that is suitability. That's a whole other chapter. So cash, the policy owner bears the investment risk, not the insurance company. That the insurance carrier, that's like the the big the big whammy there. And yeah, let me go. Let me just go back here. And then um, each domestic insurance carrier must establish one or more separate accounts if they issue variable uh, if they issue variable whole life. And the assets in the separate account cannot be combined with the company's general account. So it's like one or the other, right? Now the general account for the insurance company is conservative. It's for long-term investments to make sure the insurance carrier makes profits over time. The separate account can be riskier investments for larger growth long, long, long term, larger growth long term based on Wall Street performance. So the insurance company is like, I want to be around for 100 years. So we're going to make conservative investments and we're going to win over time. We're going to make a lot of money over time. And we want to be conservative about it. We want some guaranteed stuff because we want to guarantee turn of profit. The insurance carry every year. The insurance, uh, the, the separate accounts is that going to be a little riskier. I want larger long term growth based on performance. So this is riskier, definitely short term, and this is not going to pro probably not going to make as much long term. Next, we have variable universal life. So variable universal life, which we're going to cover universal life as well. Variable universal life is a flexible premium. So in a universal life, it has a flexible premium that can be increased, decreased, or even skipped if the cash value can cover it. Okay. So. Um, We'll cover universal life. This will make more sense at that point. So it, it, you can increase or decrease the amount of insurance. A universal life is like a flexible premium and flexible benefit policy. It's, it's flexible. and it, it, A lot of people refer to it as a cash value term policy, which I'll get into in a little bit. But there's no guarantee return on a variable universal life. Okay, so variable universal life, you may be able to pay a little extra some month, a little lo lo less another month. Variable life is regulated by the state and federal government. Okay, so you have to be re registered representative with FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulation Authority or something like that, FINRA, to sell variable universal life. So this means that you have to take your Series 6 or Series 63 or Series 7, I think it's Series 6, 63, totally separate courses. So if you want to sell variable products, you have to do that, um, and you have to get, get those to be registered with FINRA. <clears throat> so it's registered, registered with the SEC, which is federal, uh, national level. Securities and Exchange Commission, and FINRA, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. Yep, And it's also regula regulated by the state level as an insurance product, so the state's Department of Insurance. So remember, insurance is regulated by the state. Securities are regulated by the nation or federal government. So in variable life is regulated by both. The insurance part is regulated by the state. The variable securities part is regulated by the national uh, federal government. Agents selling variable products must be a registered representative with FINRA, have a license to sell insurance, and a license to sell securities. And uh, index life is another form of life insurance that's tied to the stock market. There's a minimum guaranteed interest rate. So in an, in an indexed life policy, there's a minimum interest rate that it can earn, right? And variable, it could be a negative. So you could have a negative return on your cash value one year, or it could be positive. For index life, there's a guaranteed minimum um, and it can increase with gains in the market. The face amount of the policy will increase with inflation over time. So the face, the debt, the face amount of the policy, which would equivalent would be uh, in a ratio to the death benefit, or would be the death benefit. It's going to increase over time to account for inflation. But insurance companies love these because they keep most of the gains in the upswing of the market. So what happens is, say, the market performs at fifteen percent. But the maximum that you can earn is 7%. The minimum is 25 but the max is 7 or 7.5%. The insurance company is keeping that other 8% return on your money. So people sell these in the index universal life or whatever. I don't know. My personal opinion, I don't. They, they sell it as a retirement product. Life insurance is not a retirement product. A 401k is not a retirement product, okay? 
They're not. They, 401ks were designed to help people invest in the stock market after the Great Depression or, or some time like that. They're help, designed to help people get back into the market. You know, in, you know, life insurance is life insurance. It's not for retirement, but it can be an asset. So just beware if people try to get you to pitch it that way because it is not a retirement account. You're setting people up for a tough time potentially. You, when you understand the mechanics of the policy, you don't understand that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So universal life. Um, I'm going to get into kind of the basics of the breakdown of the universal life. So universal life is fl flexible premium adjustable life insurance. So it gives the policy owner the ability to adjust the premium, the cash value, the death benefit, and offers a few different death benefit options. So the policy owner can increase and decrease the premium paid in. So they can increase how much they want to pay and they can decrease how much they want to pay every month, but there is a guaranteed minimum. Essentially, the change in premium just affects how long the policy will stay in force. It's a mix between whole life and term. Some call it a cash value term policy. You don't have to know that for your license course. There's a minimum premium that maintains the policy year to year and a target premium that's intended to keep the policy active for its whole lifetime. So every year, there's going to be a minimum premium that you have to pay just to keep the policy in force, okay? And then in the there's going to be a target premium, which is how much the client would have to pay to keep the policy active for its whole lifetime. So be careful if you're buying or selling a universal life policy that you let your clients know, yes, there is, you can pay X amount a month, but, which is the minimum premium, but if you want to keep the policy for the life of the policy, you have to pay the target premium. So this is kind of how it works in a universal life policy since the cost of insurance increases every year. So your premium, say, just example, say you keep the premium the same, okay? Cash value is going to increase over time, and then the cash value starts to decrease over time. Because what happens is this blue thing here, the cost of insurance, starts to increase every year. So in a whole life policy, the cost of insurance is the same every single year. In a universal life policy, it's lower when it starts, and it, the cost, the actual internal cost of insurance increases over time. So at first, you see how this premium here is more than the cost of insurance, significantly more. So what happens? Well, the cash value starts to increase because you're paying a little more on top of what the cost of insurance is. You're getting some extra in there. Cash value starts to increase. They're saying this is a surplus of premiums that we're getting. And then at about this point here where the cost of insurance equals the premium, the cash value starts to dip because you're still spending the same amount on your premium, but the cost of insurance is actually higher than what you're spending on your premium. So it starts to eat into the cash value. Okay, and the cash value starts to decrease at which point when there's no more cash value, the policy implodes and it's done. So a target premium would hypothetically keep the policy in force for its whole lifetime. Now there's two death benefit types on a universal life. There's plan A and plan B. So plan A is where you have the death benefit minus the cash. Uh, <clears throat> so it's where the death benefit is essentially very close to the cash value over time. It'll, it'll build to that. So what you're going to see is the death benefits level here, and then it, it goes up over, over time. It, because what this is, is the cash value can never exceed the death benefit. There's something called like a something corridor. I forget what it's called. Um, you may, you're going to have to know this for your exam too. Um, corridor, IRS corridor, I think. Life insurance. Let me just check this out real quick. I'm pretty sure it's called an IRS. Yeah, IRS corridor. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is called the corridor where in universal life insurance, the cash value is, can never, uh, it, it can only, the death benefit is always going to be a little bit more than the cash value, okay? Bottom line, that's what that means. So in plan A, it's just level death benefit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stay the same, and then once the cash value starts to approach the death benefit, the death benefit increases a little bit. So the death benefit minus the cash value equals the net amount of risk. So what happens in here, right? Low risk to the insurance company, lower risk. Now, in this one, this is an increasing death benefit option where the death benefit, the cash value adds to the death benefit from the start of the plan. So see, the death benefit increases. Every, every dollar the cash value increases, the death benefit increases as well. So that's riskier to the insurance company. It costs more money as well. Next, we're going to look at adjustable life. So adjustable life can assume the form of either term or whole life. Uh, it was designed to give the policy owner the best of both worlds, and the insured determines how much the need and how much they want can afford as a payment, and the insurance carrier determines what insurance is best. To be honest, I've never really seen an adjustable life insurance policy. I've been doing this a while now. 
I really just see universal life, but I'm going over it because it's in the course and they may ask about it on the exam. So the insured can make changes to the policy as their needs change. They can increase or decrease the premium paying period. They can increase or decrease the face amount. They can convert it from term to whole life. Um, they can change the period of protection. Increasing death benefit and changing from whole life to term will require evidence of insurability because it's more risk to the insurance company, right? If you're like, I want more insurance, they may say prove that, you can, that you're insurable. And if you want to go from whole life to term, your premium drops significantly for the same amount of death benefit. So the company says, let's make sure that that risk is worth it for us. And the insurer may also adjust the death benefit. Now, the policy owner may pay additional premiums if they want in many situations, and cash value only develops when premiums exceed the cost of the insurance policy. So it's kind of like how universal life works, right? Adjustable life, I think it's kind of an outdated thing, and then it started to become universal life. So those are the basics, uh, the basic types of life insurance. If you have any questions, just reach out to me at, uh, at jve at the jve.com. Like I said, once you get licensed, if you want to learn how to sell life insurance on the phone, just check out my other channel, Justin Vom Eigen. And uh, check out my other playlist too on my channel. You're going to see some videos pop up here for a playlist. And you're going to see some videos uh, pop up for my channel. And you can watch my content. Also subscribe and like and share with any of anyone else studying for the course. Thank you.